I think it showed her how much these people don't really care about you. Right? Because, like, at one point, everybody, Shikari Richardson, Shikari Richardson. As soon as something happened, and I'm pretty, damn, I'm pretty sure you could feel the same way. Like, 100%. I and, came in as a golden boy just in the same situation, dog. Mm, same situation. And then yeah. you you on top of the world. On top of the world. As soon as something happened, so many naysayers, so many people, cr critics, and point out what you shouldn't do and how you're wrong. Yeah. Did that change? Even just think about it. Did that change your, your, your mentality coming back in it? Absolutely. Mm. It, it, it hardened me. Made me more callous. It made me realize that the world wasn't for me. The world's against me now. Mm. And I had to be for myself. And I had, to build, I had to build a whole different persona. I had to go from being Justin Gatlin to being Jay Gat. Mm. So when I stepped on the track, Jay Gat didn't care. Jay Gat, Jay Gat was there to, to do battle. Mm. Jay Gat was there to win. Because he knew that seven of the guys were lined up there. They trying to take food out your mouth and money out your pocket. Mm. That's mine. And I give y'all a head start. I've been gone for four years. Now I'm back. What are we about to do? You know what I mean? A lot of them dudes didn't want to see me come back into the game. But I'm back now. So we had to deal with this problem. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. This is actually day two. Um, I got a special guest in the building, uh, 2004 Olympic gold medalist, um, but entrepreneur, of course. He's doing his thing in business. But beyond that, um, somebody who defied the odds, uh, went through all type of adversity. I mean, more than... It's funny. I want to say more than twice, right? I want to say more than once because, as we know, the public know, he went through some things twice in the public, but just be, us being us, and I'm sorry I got to do it, us being black men, I mean, being from Brooklyn, New York, that's an odd in itself, right? So you might think it was two things, but, I mean, we've been going through things our entire life. Uh, this guy, um, we spoke yesterday for a little bit. We had some, um, some technical difficulties. We, he stayed an hour after. And I feel like, I mean, you know, we can't throw the friend word around loosely, but this, he's a good acquaintance of mine for now. Let's just say for now. Justin Gatlin is in the building. What up, brother? What's up, my man? My God, you're man. You're good, man. Cheers. Yes, sir. I want to say course. cheers to you, man. I appreciate cheers you. Cheers to you and cheers to the show. Nah, for thank sure, you. Man. For, like, you were so patient yesterday. Um, I feel like... A lot of the conversation I wish we didn't have, but I, I just feel like we it's, it, it was just... It was it just was, natural, man. Yeah. It was just so natural. No, nah, facts. I feel like, like it's not... It's, we gonna get that again. Yeah, like, and, and at the end of the day, yes, yeah, so we friends, bro. We I appreciate friends, that, bro, for I mean? real. Like, hey, you saying downstairs in the lobby is like, you know, as black men, we gotta know how to be able to be comfortable around other black men, mm. give them their flowers, and also represent, you know what I'm saying, for another black man, even if I ain't grow up with you, we ain't go to the same school, but you know what? You're doing positive things, mm, mm, mm. and I got to stand behind that because that's what I believe in. Bro, let's go to it then. Yo, you are, I want to give you your flowers, and I, I, hey, I shout out Drink Champs all the time. If if I, uh, if I had a box full of flowers, I would give it to you right now, right? And um, let's do that figuratively. If I, we just imagine this is a box of flowers. Yo, you were, I mean, and are, still is, like a legend, right? Um, one, do you feel that? Does it feel like you're a legend? I, I guess so. I mean, I say I guess so because when you are so obsessed with the process, mm. you don't think about the accolades that come with it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a champion. I know I'm a champion because I worked for it. I achieved it, right? Mm. And I moved on to the next, next project or mm. I moved on to the next mission, right? And then once I look back, I accumulated all this, and I'm like, well, damn, I, I guess I am a legend. But then I realized the ones we are praising on TV now for winning one race and running one fast time, they goaded. Mm. And I realized that for me, I've been doing it for almost 20 years. Facts. 20 years. And 
through all my ups and downs, if you look at it, I did everything you could imagine in track and field. I accomplished everything. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave no stone unturned, good or bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I have a different perspective of my sport and mindset as well. It got to make it feel good. Like, you retired, what, uh, two, two years ago, a year ago? 2021, yeah. So you retired two years ago. It got to make it easier to retire when you leave no stone unturned and you have so much success, right? Or is it still just as hard? <laughs> <laughs> it's just as hard, dog. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm imagining because I'm just thinking about, like, Tom Brady. I'm like, bro, come on. You, it's, it should be easy to walk away, bro. Like, it's, it's not, though, because mm. think about it. I did this my whole adult life. Mm. Tom Brady did it did that his whole adult life. Yeah. And then one day you're going to wake up and you ain't doing it no more. It ain't like a regular nine to five job where you can kind of segue in and be like, hey, Ronnie, Ronnie's about to retire, y'all. He's at this age. Hey, we're going to have a party for him and everything like that. And think about sports, period, across the board. There's a lot of people out there that we would dub a legend or GOAT, and then they didn't get the proper send off. Mm. You know what I mean? Because in sports, the fairy tale ending is something that we all chase. But a lot of us don't get to, a, get to achieve it, dog. We don't get to achieve it. Facts. And, that's, and that, that mirrors life. <sighs> Hold up. So many questions already. I'm going to push back a little bit. I feel like the ones we call legends in the, I don't know if this is the right terminology, the, the major sports, they do get the right send-offs. We, when we look at track, right, I don't think y'all get, y'all just do, period. So let alone the right send off. So we talk about Tom Brady's, uh, if LeBron James was to stop today, Michael Jordan's, uh, whatever legend you can name that you can think of, right? Even to golf, <laughs> we go to, uh, uh, what's my guy's name? Tiger Woods, just being honest, right? Yeah. You guys are competing for the world, for the United States. Y'all competing against the world mm -hmm. for the United States, right? And I don't think y'all get y'all just do. I don't think you got your the right send off. So I would push back. I agree with you, one hundred percent. I mean, especially in our sport, we. I don't think a lot of people in our sport got the right send off. They may got a send off, but it wasn't the right send off. Man. Mm. You know, you making history. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I can open up textbooks from school and see me in the textbooks. You know what I mean? I've been in a New York New York Times crossword puzzles. Mm. You know what I mean? So my name has been out there. And you have a lot of athletes who've been in that kind of same situation, but don't get the just do because mm. I think it's our sport. Our sport is more worldwide recognized and not really strong in domestically, meaning America. Bro, all right, before I get to how does it feel, right? I told you, this is going to be easy. It's, it's um, similar to your hometown. So I paint a picture, right? Uh, a lot of the audience know. I started hosting, right? When I first started hosting, it's not about me, it's about you, but just paint a picture. I started hosting, when I first started hosting, I started hosting with big crowds, mm -hmm. but outside of the city. Yeah, yeah. Just like your every, like your, your up-and-coming rapper, though, we all want to feel love at home. Yeah. So we overlook the big stages we're on, and I'm wondering, because we all want to feel home, just like... I'm assuming track, just how track can mirror life. Was it times where you was frustrated or moments that you didn't feel like you got the real love from home because you competed on a worldwide track, um, a worldwide stage? Home was different for me because my achievements were the Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. So once I got home, I had billboards up okay. on the streets just in time. My billboard, I'm coming across the line, you know, I went to the, we have, you know what the Civic Center is basically, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so they, I had an autograph signing at the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. There was so many people there to see me to get autographs and sign. I literally sat there for like two and a half hours just signing autographs, saying hello to people in the community. Mm -hmm. That's it. So my love from my city has always been, it's been real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Been, it's been tried and true. You know, mm -hmm. even through my bad times, like they really, they really stuck by me. You know, I had people reach out to me and was like, man, track, you don't got to do that no more. Come work with me. Mm -hmm. and I mean, these are people who are making millions of dollars, right? Just come have a job. And as much as I would love to take it, it was never about the money for me or a diff different opportunity for leveling up. It was about me achieving the goal that I set out in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I was track. So that's what I wanted to do. So you got the love from home, Brooklyn. Yeah. But do you feel like you got the same amount of love Countrywide, in the United States as a whole, 
Um, later. Mm. Later. In, po- in pockets as well. It's so random, dog. I, I, can, I can go to Publix um, shopping center, and I could be shopping, people recognize me. Or I could be out at the club, bouncer recognize me. And, and I, don't, I don't move like I have to be a superstar. You know what I mean? Like, I, I move like a regular dude. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Yeah. If you can, tap into the times where I don't want to be transparent and be vulnerable. Tap into the times where it was frustrating, if ever. Because, bro, I go out every now and again and get recognized, right? Bro, you're Justin Gatlin. You're, like, when I'm thinking, because I'm a track uh, fan, I'm thinking Justin Gatlin, I'm thinking Usain Bolt, I'm thinking LeBron James, I'm thinking Tom Brady. Am I overhyping it? I help me if I, I just feel like for me, yeah. you beat Usain Bolt, right? Yeah. So like y'all are on. Yeah, granted, I want because I don't want to take nothing away from him. He's definitely put a whole new look on the sport. We got to give him his respect. Yeah. But when it comes to competing, you are up there with the greats. So when you say, yeah, I go out with a bounce and recognize me, like, wait, I don't, <laughs> that, that, that doesn't make sense for me. Help me out. Did, did that ever frustrate you at, at a time? Being recognized or not being recognized? Not being recognized. Not being recognized? Yeah, or being recognized once in a blue. Like, what? Like, I can't understand that. Help me out. Nah, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with just being... When you, when you achieve a certain, certain status or stardom, everyone knows who you are. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows how you move. Everyone knows where you're going to be. So when you get some kind of... Um, a moment of just being normal, mm-hmm. right? It's like a breath of fresh air sometimes where I can just do something normal. Mm. I can't walk around. I mean, I, I've tried so hard so many times, wear a hat, wear glasses, uh, try to just disguise myself enough to where I can just go out and just be normal, fit in, and they still recognize me. Mm. It don't even matter. You know what I mean? So I just accept it. It is what it is. So you do feel like a star then? It's not like... Yeah. Or is it 50-50? It's 50-50. Okay. It's 50-50. Okay, I it's, see that. It's, it's, it's the energy I feel like I also give off. So if I give off and I come in the room and, you know, I'm flexing, I'm doing my thing, then you know it's like, hey, damn, who that? Who that over there? Oh, that's mm. such and such. Then, then I'm going to get that attention. If I'm low key and I'm just kind of just moving around and just chilling and everything like that, then people going to, they'll still recognize me, but I think the energy I'm giving off is like, oh, that's old dude, but he's just chilling, man. Just let him be. You know? Let me ask you this thing. Not to dwell here, right? Okay, we all, we, I feel like the competitors... And all of us, no matter if we play sports, I don't know, we play video games, whatever. Like, we all want a piece of legacy with our name, right? Mm-hmm. Outside of the record books, are you satisfied with the legacy you have left behind? Outside of the record books, would you be happy with, are you content with it? I mean, you come up with the questions today, dog. I'm just curious. You come up with the questions today. Um... That's hard. I am, but it's hard for me to say I am completely because mm. I always want more, dog. Yeah, that's what, I, I mean, that's what I'm curious You know what I'm about. saying? Yeah. You always want more. For sure. You always want more. But I don't think, again, not to keep going, I, I, don't, I don't see a LeBron, I'm only saying greats. I don't see a LeBron James saying he want more. I don't think I would see you saying both. And that's why I'm at because I feel like it's a, it's a disservice. That's just my opinion. This is my, I could be wrong. I mean... It's different levels, though. You look at someone like LeBron James, he's basketball, yes, it's worldwide, but it's dominated in America, right? So Mm -hmm. everyone's watching basketball from a young age, growing up, uh, the finals, all of America is stopping to watch who's going to win the finals. And when you handpicked, and I'm not going to say the word handpicked, but when you have shown that you are one of one, like a LeBron or Jordan, you know what I'm saying, or Steph or Kobe, Mm -hmm. whatever like that, then you're going to garner a certain amount of attention that other athletes who work probably just as hard as you won't obtain because of your talent level and your skill set. You know what I mean? And someone like LeBron, yeah, he going to have that kind of tension where he's not going to want anymore. He, what does he need? Mm. And his tax bracket is different, dog. You know what I mean? It's, w- w- if you can make enough money to where you can't, don't have to want for anything, what do you need? Mm. It'll only take time for you to get it. It may take two seconds. It may take two months. But you're going to get it because right. you have the opportunity to have that. Okay. But I think for an athlete, certain things that we can't achieve is like time. Mm. Like, I guarantee you between Tom, myself, 
Usain, LeBron, like, there are always going to be moments in your career that you wish you could have back to do something different, and you won't be able to achieve that again. Because even for, again, I'm, just, I'm a fan right now. Even for people that might be saying I'm over-exaggerating. Okay, let's say Usain Bolt is next to Tom Brady, to LeBron. I'm trying to be fair. So I'm not trying to be this fair. I'm just being fair. My, yeah, yeah. Even if I had to put you on a level of Peyton Manning, I feel like he still got his, like, am I tripping, guys? <laughs> like, like, you get what I'm trying to say here? I feel like he still got the, and I feel like, I feel like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but now that I'm thinking about it, the top competitors in the sport, I feel like that might be a frustration sport wide because now I think about what's the guy that's um, killing it right now? In what? Track. Uh, you got Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles. Okay. Yeah. He just made a statement of NBA, they're not world champions. So am I wrong? Because now that I'm thinking about it, he's expressing a frustration that I would feel. Like, bro, like, they're not world champions. First, what, well, we're going to get about what you think about that, but... Do you feel like that's a frustration sport wide? Like, bro, like, we deserve the same recognition. I think when it comes down to knowing that certain, like, let's just say sponsorship, right? Mm -hmm. Sponsorship is always going to lean to what is they know, for mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. history wise, and what is popular, right? Mm -hmm. And in our sport, especially, let's say, male sprinting, male sprinters are only going to be around, you know what I'm saying? The average elite male sprinter is going to be two cycles. Two cycles means eight years. Yeah, two. So you know every Olympics, mm -hmm. right? So you're you're lucky to have a um, you're lucky to have a an athlete make it from one Olympics to be able to either defend his title for the next Olympics. That's mm. a, that's a tough. That's a tall order. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So when that situation happens, you got to look at the longevity of things. Mm. The longevity of things really do matter. And I think the frustration comes from the fact of popularity over real work, hard mm. work. You know what I mean? The, a craft. You, you, are, you are a fan of track and field, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. If you sat down with somebody who's not a fan of track and field, right? Like, I'm, I'll make pretend I'm the fan. Not, Come on, I'm, talk, yeah. You're I'm, fan. I'm, I'm, I'm not you. the fan, right? Uh -huh. I'm going to go to a track meet with you. I'm going to tell you, track looked like chaos because there's somebody jumping over here. There's somebody running around the track, a group of people running around the track over here. Damn, where'd they go? They just left. Oh, they must be finished. Now people straining, hurdling, and doing all this, and they pole vaulting over here. It looks like a circus. Yeah. It needs to be, track needs to evolve and change, and I think if it evolves and changes, you'll see that individuals will get the recognition that needed because in track, we look at their performances, and we don't recognize their persona. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Where, in, like in basketball, you recognize persona along with their performance. You know how LeBron acts. You know how Michael Jordan is. You know how Dennis Rodman is. You see what I'm saying? Because people love a character, but they also love a talented character. We don't get that recognition because we don't get that much, much TV time. We don't get that much presence. Okay. I get that. It's kind of... Again, I'm still pushing back, <laughs> but it, it's kind of like football. Because I used to, even being in high school, I used to be jealous of the basketball guys because they, they get the, get the haircuts, they playing, people seeing them, they know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, we put a helmet on. You really you know the number. You know if we won. Like, you don't really know us, our per personality, for real. I get that. But even still, the greats get their love. And I'm just fighting for you. I'm sorry. I'm I, fighting. I, I, hey, brother. <laughs> I ain't going to stop you from fighting for me, dad. <laughs> so, all right, the, curious. This is a fun moment. How do you feel about the statement, um, they aren't world champions, talking about uh, NBA players? I mean, technically, it's true. Mm. But, but I will say this. I think what really sparked the controversy is the fact that it was what he said and how he said it. It was said in a manner of like, of what? What are they world champions of? Like, mm. y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all scrubs, basically. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of... That's, 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 that's a stretch. The, the okay. feeling, I mean, yeah, the, the, the a, energy came off of that way, okay. right? Okay, that's a reach, but... Okay. But, all right, if we line up our, if we line up our five best... NBA players in, in the United States, born and raised, mm -hmm. and you line up the five best in Argentina or Nigeria or anywhere else, yeah. we, we mopping them, bro. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. We mopping Facts, them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I think in that situation, when it comes to the NBA, world champion is subjective because is if you do the numbers, yeah, they're the best in the world. You, we just, we just shortcutting it and saying that, you know, they're the world champions and they only play in America. 
Am I wrong? Help me out. I might be a little premature, bro. I'm a <laughs> fan, but like I ain't really like an OD crazy fan. But if I'm premature, help me out. Tell me I'm reaching. All right. I feel like at the time, if you lined up the five fastest sprinters in the United States, <laughs> and you line up the five fastest sprinters anywhere, <laughs> like you, like Jamaica, like I already know, fast, I already know where you going with it. Like, come on, like come on, like at a time, it was yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Am I tripping? No, you ain't tripping. All right. You ain't tripping. Okay, okay. You ain't tripping. You ain't tripping. Because, like, Shelly Ann, uh, who is it? Uh, Sharika, uh, Usain, um, like, they really nice. They are great, but it wasn't always like that. Yeah. Yeah. L- like, I mean, the United States has a, has a has a deeper, richer history in sprinting. Yeah, and, well, and we come true. and we usually come with the numbers. All right. Yeah. You're I'm right. right. I'm right to say. I, I give it to you. You're right. Because we need more recognition. I would love more re- recognition. Mm. You know what I mean? Because when I look at myself, yeah, I'm going to be humble about it, but I, I'm not. Yeah, I you know, know, I know. Yeah, I've yeah. done it all. I've been through it. Your you know fastest time was, yo, the, um, can, can somebody grab somebody from the door right there? Just open it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, my bad. You got it. Uh, it's open path right there. I'm asking what, what you got. It. Yeah, so your fastest time was 971? 974. 974. This was 2004? This when you won Olympics? No, no, no. You ran a 974 at 30 something. I ran five 974s at 37. I was 37 years old and I ran five, nine, five nine sevens in a season and no, no one, not even Usain Bolt, has done that. Yo. But that was mindset, though, bro. Everybody always talk this mindset, bro. I don't... Mindset I, real, dog? What do you mean? It's real. You think it was... My, you know it was your mindset thing. I went into the season with the with the intent of saying, okay, you got people like you saying who's running nine sixes. You got Johan Blake who's ran nine six. You got mm-hmm. Tyson Gay who's ran nine six. You know what I'm saying? At that point in time, I was like, all right, well, how can I get to nine six and even better? I got to normalize nine seven. Mm. How am I going to achieve something that's a 9-7 and work towards 9-7 in the hope that I get 9-6? It don't work like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Even to, even to the point of you starting training, you have to know what you're training for. You have to know what time you're training for, right? So my, my thing is I'm going to normalize 9-7. So if I run enough 9-7s, myself, my body's going to know how to be able mind. to. Exactly. So when I get in the dogfight, I'm 9-7, so I know I'm going up. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Facts. I'm about to, about to drop that 9-6 on the duck. Mm. About to run up out the skin. You know what I mean? So that was my whole mindset. So I, I used my mindset in the beginning of the season. I set my regimen. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. So if I was out there put, uh, pulling sleds and pushing sleds 60 meters with 45-pound weights, double that shit. Mm. Put, on, put on another 45 on there. Because guess what's, guess what's inevitable? Pain. Pain is inevitable. That's it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Win or lose, you're going to feel some kind of pain. Either you're going to feel some kind of pain in the beginning when you are working hard for it, mm-hmm. and then when you're out there competing, it make it easy. It looks easy, right? Or either you're going to bullshit through your training season and you're wishing upon a star and hoping that your season's going to be amazing. You're going to dogfight for it, and then that's where the next pain going to come in. Mm. It's trying to get it. So I said, I'll, I'll, I'll do the pain here so I can live forever over here. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and winging in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Yeah, I'm just curious. Again, a lot of these questions are just fan questions. Hope, hope the audience don't be too mad. They probably yeah. want to know too, bro. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yo, I'm curious. How what? How do you know when you're at your, your peak, right? The highest you can go. Mm-hmm. And can you train through that? Or genetically, is it just a certain amount or... 
a certain amount of pain or uh, performance that your body can do. So you mean as in like when you're in the season and you're peaking and you're like at your best? And, like yeah, you in general. Like how do you know when fast? a human is just like, if, like let's say 9-6, right? Yeah. 9-6, like how do you know that my body can't get a 9-5, right? Like some people just, I feel like we're built differently. Or is that always a training thing that you can always break? I, I just think it's just it's outliers. You know, outliers are people who stand out. Yeah, that's who, what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, people who open the door for the rest of society, mm -hmm. and people who think that nine five is impossible, and then one, it only takes one person to run nine five, and now you're like, wait a minute, I think we can do that. Well, let's reverse engineer what he did to get there, and then now we can do it, and that's how we replicate. That's human, dog. That's so you're do. saying that's not just a genetic thing, that but somebody could train to do that. Both. I'm I'm gonna go with both. To be honest, man. You know what I mean? It, do I think there's a whole bunch of nine fives just rolling out here? Hell no. Nah. Mm -hmm. Nine five is a, is a very tall order to fill. But at the same time, if you have a special individual who have the the technique and the tools and the and the mindset to do it, then they can. Like, for example, you're six one. I'll give myself six two, six one and a half. You know, what I mean, I'm you know, you know we, 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 we going to do that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you saying what? Six five? Yes. Yeah, you're saying so six five. Let's say legs, right? Yeah. You are really good. Yeah. He's built differently. Do you think you could have ever... What he did, 958? Yeah. Do you think you could have... Bro, I, listen. When, when Usain ran 958, I remember where I was sitting at. I was sitting at a bar here, actually, in Atlanta. Mm. I lived in Atlanta at the time. And um, I got so many phone calls, and people were so scared because mm. it blew their mind. They never thought somebody could run that fast. So... They were, they were actually athletes who left from running the 100 meters. They're like, I'm going to find another event. I'm not even doing this, dog. I can't even win. I mean, what I'm am I training for? That's Silver? That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, they can't even win. But my mindset, when I saw him do that, dog, I was like, I want to race that guy. Just mm -hmm. like that. I want to race that guy. Because I feel like if that guy did it, there has to be a way for me to do it. Mm. There has to be a way for me to train, learn techniques, learn angles, understand regimen. And I can be able to compete against him. I like the battle. Mm, I like, I mean, of course, but I don't see anything less than that, though. But as we talk, I don't see you doing anything. I don't see you leaving 100. Like, I, I feel like that's normal for, again, I never ran, like, yeah. I didn't run at a professional level, but when I talk, certain people just are built from a different club. So, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even, somebody. When I came back in the sport, I came back in the sport intent with the intent to, to, to bang with you, uh, mm. what you're saying. We see other sports where people have these rivalries and they become friends. Um, do you talk to you saying at all? No, yeah, we cool. We we've been out. We club before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and obviously, if you ever watched like 2017 when I beat him in the world championship, you know he showed me love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, now nah, we the kind of people that we gonna sit and play, you know, play PS5 together and do stuff like that. Nah, because it's always gonna be that that wall of like threat. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Even after the sport is over? Uh, after the sport, I don't care, bro. You know what I'm That's saying? What I'm like, saying. You like, know what now, I, like, where y'all at now? I knew that we were going to get to this point, bro, like eight years before it's time for me to retire. I was like, bro, we're going to get old. We're going to get fat. We're going to look back and be like, damn, man. You remember that time we ran them fast? These little kids ain't running nowhere where we were running that. Because mm. now you go from being a competitor to being more of an advocate of each other's legacies. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I knew when I came back into the sport, I knew that this was legacy time. Like, if I'm going to get back to the top, I got to fight to get back to the top for one. And then two, I got to be, I got to be him mm. to get back to the top. Yeah, because like y'all, y'all rivalry were, was like, I don't want to say intimate, I don't know what a good word for, but like y'all were really, shit, when he did his documentary, he brought you up. Like, you, Justin Gatlin was a part of my motivation. There was a time where I wasn't motivated and I looked up and I'm like, oh nah. So he made me, Stay so my P's and Q's. So two things. I've never watched a documentary. Still. Still to this day, I've not watched a documentary. And then, and then, I'm not against it though. You know what I'm saying? It's just never been presented and put in front of me to watch it. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like that. You ain't finna pour no drink for no other dude. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, well, cool. If if I'm with somebody, they put it on, I'll watch it. You mm. know what I mean? But, um, and then the second one is, damn, I damn forgot that. That's all good. Well, you remember, just bring it back yeah. up. Yo, you did, um... Did they, they ain't never do a documentary on you? We did short docs. We did a couple of short docs. But I'm working on something right now, actually. When did you do a short doc? Actually, it was on BET. It BET? Was, yeah. 
When, how long ago was this? Man, right before maybe 2012, right? The 2012 Olympics. I'm everywhere, but I swear I'm on fan shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> seeing, um, because we talked about it yesterday, seeing Sydney, uh, Sydney uh, McLaughlin's, yeah. uh, it was like a, I wouldn't even say it was a short doc, it was a vlog. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a vlog. Seeing her vlog. Yeah. Compared to like your doc back in 2012. Yeah. Do you be like, man, I wish I had this type of technology when I was back, when I was coming up in the, in the game? Man, now you're gonna make me sound old as hell, dog. I'm just kidding, because I'm like, just thinking <laughs> I mean, about it's true, it. It's true, though. It's true, I ain't gonna lie. There's been times I look and I be watching, like, man, if we had this when I was like in my prime, dog, we would be, I would be killing it, dog. Thanks. Technology, everything. Mm. I mean, even down to the spikes they wear now, all kind of stuff, dog. So mm. it's like, the past is always gonna look to the future and have some kind of envy. Now, are you hating? I don't think you're hating. There are a lot of people out there from the past who will hate on the future because of certain things like that, right? Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, I like I like to vlog, man. I, I, I guess I we could say it's a vlog, right? Yeah, it was. I think I it was like, actually a vlog. Yeah, yeah I like to vlog yeah. because it showed. I think it really showed her as the athlete she is, and I know we spoke on it before. Yeah. Um, I I felt like I was not seeing enough of Sydney. Mm. You know, like, give me more Sydney. Talk a little more. Tell me a little more about you. What do you like? What do you like to do outside of track? I feel like through some of the vlogs, it was more about her preparing for her races. Yeah. And then, you know, the support of her husband and her coach. And I feel like her husband was more, way more vocal. Yeah. You know? But at the end of the day, I didn't look at it. I didn't look at it at, at a deeper perspective. And what I mean by that is I felt what she felt. Sometimes you don't want that camera on you. Sometimes mm. it's all about doing work, dog. You know what I mean? If you gonna if you gonna if you gonna film me, film me from over here. Right. I got I got stuff to do. Because if I lose, guess who's gonna be in front of me first? You with that camera. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Sheesh. <laughs> Yo, wait, bro. It's so much to talk about. Damn. All right. So with that being said, though, how important is it to have someone? Because I feel like through the through the vlog docu, a short docu, whatever. We were able to see her husband's personality, but he, I think they also expressed two things that I thought was interesting. Her, her faith in God, but also him kind of pushing that on her for her to be to get out there. And I think that's important. How important is that to have somebody like, yo, like I know you might not want it, but we got to get this. We got to get your personality on camera. We got to show them who you are. Um, I think it's important. Mm. And like I was saying, it don't matter what you're talking about. You know what I mean? You could be talking about your faith and your religion. You could be talking about what music you like. You could be talking about cooking. You could talk about partying. You could talk about whatever you want to talk about. Mm. But the fact is, there's a lot of people out there who are your fans and your supporters and people who are just witnessing what you're doing. And they want to, at some point, they're, they are enchanted by the times in the, you're running and in, they're in awe by it. But they want to know who that person is behind the times. Facts. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No. Now, listen. She got her, she got her stuff together because she did the doc. You know, she just came out with a book. She came out with a book like a week ago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, she yeah. was promoting it. Yep, yeah, so that. who knows? By the time she gets to the later half of her career, she might do more of a... Open it up personality. Open up personality kind of thing. But she's doing it right. Those are things that I think that if I had to go back in time in my career, I would allow that to happen. I would have done it that way. Hold up, bro. Hold up. Hold <laughs> up. Because I'm about to go there. I was going to ask. I feel like, for the most part, Track stars, track and field stars, they aren't as personable. Like, they suit and tie clean could get to the business, right? Yeah. You have a few far in between who are, show that personality. It's crazy because you got to back it up. But you have those, you have a little bit, Sha'Carri Richardson, uh, Justin Gatlin, um, Usain Bolt, Noah Lyles we see. We have a few, even a young guy, not really. Uh, the 18 year old, 19 year old, what's his name, young guy from uh, Arian, Arian, yeah, Arian. I don't think, yeah. but you have a few that show yeah. that personality, yeah, and I think it helps with the sport, yeah. So, like, you it's funny hearing you say, like, you would do it differently coming up, but I feel like we need one or two because not too many people are showing that personality. Well, you know, when I was when I was their age, damn, I sound old, dog. <laughs> when I was when I was their age, we didn't have that, we didn't have instantaneous social media, mm. you see what I'm saying? We, you, we had Facebook, we had MySpace, you know what I'm saying? So we had situations where we weren't going to get that same platform. Now, sometimes you don't even need sponsors, bro, because you can build your own platform persona, and guess who's going to come to you? 
You're going to have sponsors that's going to DM you, going to come to you. So you sometimes you don't even need an agent or a publicist. But not to cut you off, right? Not even just social media. I'm saying on the track, though. Like, when, okay, you saying Boat, come out there. Uh, you come out there. You feel me? Like, you got... Yeah. Um, oh, you mean that kind of energy? Yeah, like, I feel like... I think that is needed from... Oh, I'm big. Race. I'm big on that. Okay. We only get nine seconds, bro. Exactly. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? And, and if you go down the list and the roll call are like, hey, lane one is this person. Lane two is this person. When it comes to you, you may get another 10 seconds on top of that. So what, you get like 19 seconds? You get 19 seconds to show the world who you are. Mm. You know what I mean? You're going to get your name called. You're going to do your little gesture. You know what I mean? And then you're going to run the race and hopefully you win. Because guess what? If you don't win, then the camera's not on you after that. Mm. So that's all you got. Even, so let me ask you this then. You're not that dominant in your race. Mm -hmm. Do you still suggest to show personality? I'm curious. Because that's kind of hard to add. Absolutely. Like, mm. Absolutely. There's a girl from Australia and she hurdles. Mm. And in the beginning, she was a nobody, dog. She, ain't, she, ain't, she wasn't winning no races, right? She, every time her name was called, she'd do this little, little jiggle dance, you know what I mean? Hop up and down, right? Mm -hmm. And it went viral because just because of that. They didn't care about what time she ran or nothing, dog. You know how you know how this generation yeah, is. Yeah. They focus on other things and what you know what should be important, right? Mm. So over time, that confidence grew and people and she became popular. And then she was getting invites to meets. And then now she at World Because of the social media pre Exactly. I like that. You know what I mean? Ah. So all this, that, this, the hair, the nails. For some of them, it's natural. Like for Shakari, it's natural. That's who she is. That's her persona. So it makes it easy, right? Mm. But some people have to create it. So I, you know what I mean? I think Noah is it, it's, it's, it's him, but he also puts on a little bit. It, it's a creation to show showman. You mm. got to be a showman because you because at the end of the day, when, when you think about sports, other than and you omit like scores and times, it's actually entertainment. That's a fact. That's what it is. It is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Yo, what happened to... um? The tall guy, he was running the one for a minute, for a second, and he was doing good. Another United States guy, he, he, he's a 400 runner, but he started running the one, and he started going crazy. Tall guy, Bill, I forgot his name. Anybody know his name? We had um, Curly. Curly. Fred Curly. I didn't see him in the uh, one. What happened? He good? I'm just curious. I don't, I don't know. I think he had an injury this year, so oh, okay. he didn't get a chance to defend his title, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, outside of that, this, is, this question does not correlate with who I just asked about, but... Give me some more of that vulnerability, right? Give okay. me some more of that, that old man. Knowing what everybody got now, uh -huh. knowing what y'all didn't have, are you impressed? Am I impressed? Yeah. Don't give me radio. Just give me real. How you really feel? No, I'm impressed. Mm, why? What's the biggest? What makes the biggest impression? Because I think that I think that they've tapped into something different, and what, what? I mean by that, like. This generation is, they found a way to not work as hard and still achieve superior time. And that makes, and that impresses you? It impresses me because now you, no, if you think of it as a business, mm -hmm. right? And instead of working 10 hours, you only have to work six. We just talk about it. And you're still getting the same amount of views, you're still getting the same amount of subscribers, and even more. Because now it's a different world. You see what I'm saying? So... That impresses me, the fact that they're able to go out there and run those times, and I look at their angles, and I'm like, man, their angles are off. But they're still running certain times. You know, like, that impresses me. I still would be a little hater. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, not, I'm just like, what? Right. Like, so there's a difference, though. So I'm impressed. A lot of them still have a long way to go to get to the status of being called a legend, though. Mm. So I hold that. That judgment is on reserve right now. But... Is that true? Because we throw this goat word around so loosely now. I don't throw it around. Y'all throw it around. You throw that around, dog. I mean, the go, world. Man, they, they, they'll go out there and, and win one race. They goat it. Oh, man, they goat it. <laughs> Get a man a goat sign. Give him a goat, goat emoji. <laughs> Yo, what, what times What times um are we running now? I'm curious. What's, what's, no, what's Noah fastest 100 right now? 9-8. I mean, no one's doing anything that we haven't already done at all. So when, when you look at that, how do you like? <laughs> what are you thinking? Like, does that I, that gotta make you feel a little more cocky, like confident? <laughs> like, yeah, like these niggas not me, like they good, but, you know? Because the season before they was running nines, like it wasn't nothing. I was like nine seven, like I was like, damn, dog, they they out there rolling, <laughs> dog. Because I thought it was a moment. I was like, man, you know, I might come back this year until they start putting them times down. I was like, damn, dog, they gonna mm. be a dog fight. 
And then this year, this past, it was like the complete opposite. A lot of, a lot of them either was injured or they just didn't hit the mark right. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, hold on now, hold on. I might have to be able to lace them up real quick. This is gonna sound bad. I'm not hating, I swear. This is strictly knowing this sport. You train Shakari. Speaking of us throwing this goat word around, right? This is hard to ask. What did you think? Because at a time, mm -hmm. like I love her, I, 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 I wish her nothing but the best. But times is times. That's one thing you can't take away. Yeah, yeah. So it was a time where everybody, even like now, they like, Shakari is the best 100 runner. Like people that don't really know the sport. And I sound like a hater because I'm like, bro, you crazy. Like you got Sharika Jackson and Shelly Ann Frazier. Like, I don't see her getting first, but people were hyper because she would come in first with the, uh, in high school, we call them invitationals. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For y'all, y'all have like just other meets outside of Olympics. I don't yeah. know. But the Diamond Leagues. Exactly. Like that, yeah. When you went, what was your opinion of looking at Shakari, of course, training her, looking at the times and looking at the people she was running against? As in what? Her, at the end of the day, was winning, it like winning? she's, yeah, like, was it like, yo, she's really good or she just got, she got more work to do? Bruh. There's always going to be a certain type of athlete that's going to show you not glimmers of greatness, but like... Sparks. They're great. Okay. She I like one, that. She's one of those athletes. I like that. But Watching, you... watching her at practice, some days it just it will blow your mind. Because you look at the clock, you'd be like, man, I know that time is wrong. Mm. But then, you know, you go over to one of the coaches and they'll be like, look at that. And to be comparable, mm. you know what I mean, and you will start thinking like, man, you have something special, because that's that's the first time you'll really see something special mm. in person, right? And but then you realize that specialness is wrapped in some in, in just a, a normal human being, like someone who just want to chill, someone who don't want to be bothered, mm. someone who just want to be somewhere on a beach somewhere. I don't want to be out here training, you know what I mean? But then once. The next evolution of that specialness is when, we go. when they had that aha moment, bro. That aha moment where you've been telling them for so long, like, you can run this shit. Like, this is yours. Like, this is, you had the keys to the kingdom. Take them out your pocket, get the job done, right? Okay. So I think that moment has come, and that's why you're seeing um, Shakari become more dominant. Okay. Okay. So I'm not, or not even now, I wasn't hating a year ago. When I was saying she's good, just not better than X, Y, Z, or just not there yet. She's good. She just wasn't ready for that moment. She's okay. ready for that moment. Made me feel better. So you I wasn't hating. I was. Yeah. That was. Some, I thought no, you, I had. You was right. You know. You was right. Okay. So you think she's ready now? Yeah, she's ready. Mm -hmm. She just won the world championships. She beat Sharika. She beat Shelly Ann, um, which is major. It's major, and she did it from lane nine. Major. So you already know. Yeah. You already from a track and field yeah. experience. You know it. You, you lane nine, dog. Yeah. That's no man's yeah. land. Dog. Like you by yourself, then. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. You, you want to be in the middle where you can feel it, where you can you you can run against people. You feel like yeah. it, you know what I'm saying. Lane nine, you damn near running by yourself, bro. We we always a running joke is if you get lane one or lane nine, you must you must have won a radio contest. Mm. Cause usually those people that get that those lanes, they're the slowest times. They usually. use it the slowest times. Yeah. You figure out, and you don't know who they are. Like, where'd you come from? Who, who are you? Right? Yeah, you just lane filler. They basically. barely, yeah, ex exactly. Right? You're lane filler. Yep. So for her, and then, and it's a world championship. So once you get to the finals, everyone from one lane one to lane nine is respectable, right? Mm. They they are the times. But for her to be such a a threat to the Jamaicans, Shelly Ann and Sharika, you would have thought she would have been in, inside of the race, like more interior, right? And that's kind of disrespectful now that I think about it. Huh? I've been there, bro. In 2017, they had me in lane eight. And Usain was in lane three. That's like crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, right? But it also has a gift and a curse because it was like, you out there, but then now, if you are really good at what you can do, you can just focus on your race. It's almost It almost becomes a time trial, bro, mm. which is even more deadly because... She basically is out there in lane nine, not knowing where anybody is, especially her biggest threats, and she's just hauling ass, running, mm. breaking world championship records and everything. Now, what's she going to do with that confidence now? And now she has that medal around her neck, and now she has a uh, something to stand for and something to fight for now, right? I'm a world champion, dog. You can't mm. take that away from me. Thanks. I got to fight for it. So now when she starts lining up with these girls, she has a little more confidence. It, you know what's crazy? It's almost like she needed that... Um what was it, a year ago, two years ago maybe? Mm -hmm. The whole uh, 
marijuana thing when mm -hmm. I say she needed it because not saying she was too confident or nothing like that, but I think it showed her how much these people don't really care about you. Right? Because like at one point, everybody, Shikari Richardson, Shikari Richardson. Soon as something happened, and I'm pretty damn, I'm pretty sure you could feel the same way. Like 100 percent I came it, in as a golden boy, just in the same situation, dude. Mm, same situation. And then yeah. you you were on top of the world. On top of the world. Soon as something happened, so many naysayers, so many people cr critics and point out what you shouldn't do and how you're wrong. Yeah. Did that change? Even just think about it. Did that change your your, your mentality coming back in it? Absolutely. Mm. It, it it hardened me, made me more callous. It made me realize that the world wasn't for me. The world's against me now, mm. and I have to be for myself. And I had to build. I had to build a whole different persona. I had to go from being Justin Gatlin to being Jay Gat. Mm. So when I stepped on the track, Jay Gat didn't care. Jay Gat Jay Gat was there to to do battle. Mm. Jay Gat was there to win, because he knew that. Seven of the guys were lined up there. They trying to take food out your mouth and money out your pocket. Mm. That's mine. And I gave y'all a head start. I've been gone for four years. Now I'm back. What are we about to do? You know what I mean? A lot of them dudes didn't want to see me come back into the game. But I'm back now. So we had to deal with this problem. Let's, let's, let's make this a bigger issue. Or a bigger conversation. You needed that for the sport. How did that affect you in life outside of the sport? Because that's a... A messed up spot to be in, feeling like, man, nobody really care about me. Like, it, it, it was good for a moment because I was consistent with it, mm -hmm. right? So I would, I would, I would be Jay Gat at practice. You know what I'm saying? I'll be ruthless. You know what I'm saying? I'll be intense. I'll get the job done, right? Um, competition didn't scare me. I was a competition, um, but then it started bleeding into my normal life. Mm. So that aggressiveness, that snappiness, it started seeping into like relationships. Mm. I'll start having fights over little stuff, arguments. I'll start blowing up. You know what I mean? Because I was always in fight mode. I felt like I really had to fight the world. Mm. I, I told myself, I was like, you got to battle the world. So even the woman I was loving, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Like it, it, it came to a point where I had to realize like, bro, like, you got to know how to turn it on and off. You got to be Jay Gat here and you got to be Justin here. Mm. Because Jay Gat here is going to destroy everything that you worked hard for outside of track and field. Sheesh. That's a fact. And yeah. like they tell us that early in sports, how, just learn how to compartmentalize, right? Yeah. And that's it's it's easier said than done. Yeah. Yo, curious, was you um you married, right? Yeah. Were you married during the the break that when you had the suspension? No. Okay. Were y'all together? No. Okay. Cause I was just curious, like. How, like, having somebody there for you during that moment, did you have anybody there for you during that moment? Or did you feel like it? Outside of women. Like, just... And, and, and your mother, and because I feel like you talk about your parents all the time. You know, my parents were my parents were there for me. Um, you know, during that situation, I moved back to my hometown, Pensacola. Was um, that good? Was it good? Was that a I good thing? I don't know. I mean, you got to realize that I, 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 my whole world just... Yeah. It was gone. Sponsors gone. Everything was gone, right? Mm. Certain people that you relied on, they wasn't answering the phone. So, you know, I'm getting called from my mom's like, you know what? Pack up. Come back home. You know? Yeah. What, did I want to? Of course I didn't want to. I had you know to be, mean? like, humiliating, but... It did, but from emotion, from a, looking at it now and being more mature about it, I needed that. Mm. Because if I stayed out there in the world where I wasn't getting loved... Or people are people who are, are manipulative. They can slip in. Mm. They can act like they're friends, and then guess what? The next thing you know, I'm getting DUIs. I'm getting drunk driving. I'm getting addicted to drugs. I'm getting put in jail, killing somebody, killing myself. Yeah. Who knows? It can go that way. It can yeah. go that way. Real mm. talk, though. It can go that way. You know what I mean? So I think that my mom knew that I needed to surround myself with love and support at a time where it was the darkest moment of my time of my life. You know? So. Um, but from that, did I have support? I did, but it was people who didn't care about track. You feel me? Like mm. those those circle of friends who just like you like for you. Like Justin, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Those are the people who I was hanging out with more mm. because I didn't know how the world of track and field perceived me mm. from me promoters to, to agents to coaches to even other athletes. I didn't know. And I was scared to really find out. 
You know what I mean? At that point in time, I need to heal myself first. Man, shout out to moms, bro. Yeah, moms. Come on, bro. Yeah, moms A1. My mom, my mom's about to uh she's about to write my book. That's hard. From her perspective. That's so fire. Yeah. That gotta put some pressure on you. Cause you got a daughter and a son now. Or the two, two sons. sons. Two, two sons. sons. Yeah. Got a son that's three and a son that's and 13. A son that's 13. Yeah. That gotta like your mom being that person for you gotta make you wanna be that person for your children, like times 10 or something. Oh, 100 percent But I mean, naturally, I mean. I am that. Like, mm. I'm, a, I'm a really good mixture of my mom and dad, for mm. sure. You know what I mean? Like, so it comes natural. So with my kids, I'm going to chastise them. I'm going to punish them when they're bad. But when it comes to, like, life situations from an early age, I tell them, I like, look, you can do this or you can do that. Mm. This is going to get you here. That's going to get you there. What do you, what do you really want to do, right? And this or that could be good or bad, mm. right? Like my son now, he's 13, and, you know, He's amazing on the football field. He played O line. He played a D. He played D line as well. Um, he just had a game what yesterday, day before, and he had like six tackles, two sacks. So he plays hard. His mm -hmm. mentality is in the game. He loves the game. But then I tell him, I was like, look, if you want to get to the next level, high school, college, whatever like that, this is where you have to operate, and this is how you have to act, because that's how that's what's going to get you to that point. But if you don't, and you just want to be who you are, you want to be tardy and late to school and do all this kind of stuff like that, but still be an exceptional football player, it's going to catch up to you. Because what's going to happen is those coaches are going to know that you're a problem child. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're not a, you, you don't listen when it's necessary outside of the football field. And no coaches from high school, college, or even the professional level, they're not going to lose sleep over you. You leave that field and you out there acting up, doing something you ain't supposed to do, you're going to get on the chopping block. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I think that allowing our children and allowing my children to make those decisions is going to help get them to a level where they're making adult decisions early on so it saves them from making childish decisions and mistakes mm. that's going to set them back. Yeah. It, do you, is it easy to, um, I guess, be, because he's playing football and not mm -hmm. track, is it easy to be there and help coach because it's not track? I'm dad, bro. It, I, I coach him. And but at the end of the day, his his godfather is like, hey, when 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 my godfather gonna coach me again? When we gonna do, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So okay. It, it's always gonna be like that. And I realized that and I talked to other dads, you know what I mean? And even like, say for instance, like Tom. Mm. Tom was like, Tom Brady was like, you're always gonna be dad. So as much as accolades you have, much success you have, if you the goat or not the goat, the fact is you're a dad. Mm. They want to hear it from somebody else. Even if you tell them that, they want to hear it from somebody else so they can confirm it. Well, well, let's outside of your son, right? Because you train a lot of kids as well, and you had a, you I train you? I train kids, but I also train professionals as well. Let's say professionals. Uh -huh. We see Coach Prime having so much success right now, or not even just right now. He's been having success as a coach, and I think a part of that was because he was able to take his greatness out of it and understand that everybody wasn't going to be him. And I think it. Just from what I hear, I would think that's hard as an athlete who performed at a really, really high level as a prom, as a yourself. And I'm wondering, is that hard to do when you're going into coaching these these even professionals? They're still kids. When, you, when you're coaching these professionals and you might want them to do it how you did it because you had so much success. Is that hard trying to... Oh, it's extremely hard mm. because they're not me. Not knocking it. It's the fact that I took a very unorthodox route to get to my success, right? Um, as much as I want to coach them on a philosophy or style or ideology that I thought made, has made me successful, it may not make them successful that way. Mm. And I think one great thing about Prime is that Prime is like a motivational book with legs. Facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Seriously. Yeah, yeah. It's the fact that he don't got to pour himself into you. It's the fact that he could ignite who you are, your cha the champion inside of you. Mm. You know what I mean? The fact he shows and says, I did this, this, and this, and I got here this, this, and this way. Mm. That's my success. You can have that same success. You can create your own pattern. You mm. can create your own success. But these are the rules and the steps you got to abide by to get to that success. And he, let, he lets them have that because as a man and you are cultivating and help other men become men, you have to, you have, to have a, a, a layer of accountability. If I'm coddling you and say, man, do it like this, do it like this the whole way, then it's at some point where I'm not going to be there as a coach. It's called a non-coachable moment. And you, your, 
your bottom gonna fall out, dog. Mm. Is that hard to do though? Because you were so great. Is that hard to coach kids that don't get it like you got it? It is. Mm. It's hard because you become numb to it sometimes. You just be like, okay, all right, okay. Mm. And then that one come on, one that one comes along, you like make it worth it. Yeah, it wakes you up. You be like, oh. Oh, hold on now. Okay. We got something right here. Okay. Then that then that makes you excited. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. We um we got into the conversation. We came here because you were working. Can we uh tell the people what you got going on? Let's get this out the way real quick. Oh, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Sure. We, we we got lost no, in the man. conversation. Good good convo, man. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go back to it, but good convo. You got something here. Yeah. Can you explain what this is? So, all right, so we have happy farmer products, mm-hmm. okay? Happy Former products are uh, hemp CBD CBD infused products. Mm-hmm. So like this right here is a lotion. Okay, so it's good for after you work out, you have a hard day, tough day, muscles are tight, muscles are sore, anything that you're doing. After you take your shower, you can rub this on your on your body. It's gonna relax your muscles, right? Mm-hmm. So you've seen um, BioFreeze, Icy mm-hmm. Hot, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the chemical compounds at Icy Hot and BioFreeze, it 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 basically it's a tingle, and it makes you think the tingles is working, right? The mm-hmm. tingles thinking like, oh, my muscle's feeling better, I'm better. It confuses you. It, it's it, almost it, a, it distracts you. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a placebo, basically, yeah. mm-hmm. right? But with this right here, with the infuse of the CBD and the hemp in it, actually what it does is it don't tingle, it don't smell, it relaxes, relaxes, it relaxes yeah. the muscles. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like getting a massage. So those tight, tense areas that you can use... Put it up in there right there after you finish working out. I guarantee you in 10 minutes, you'll feel a difference. Mm. You know what I mean? Even if you had an injury that has been there for years, right? You just didn't know how to be able to fix it. I guarantee you, all you need to do is make sure those layers of muscles are relaxed and you'll see a difference. Okay. Same thing. We have the face cream over here, man. Face cream right here. Um, what did you say I had in the earlier? Retinol, bro. Retinol. There we go. I learned something today. What, what is that? What is that? So with the retinol... Help me out. Help yeah, me out with the Yeah, tell us, tell us, tell us. I mean, I don't know the proper word for it, but basically it tightens and firms skin and it allows for cellular regeneration faster. Okay. Um, but it is meant to wear at night for any uh, gentlemen watching, um, but it's it's great for wrinkles and fine lines and looking. So if it, y'all, y'all might y'all, y'all might don't hear it, but just Google what right now. Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> hand, me, hand me the packets right there. Hmm. So with the packets... We also have like tabs, chewables, things like that as well, right? And know a lot of people are apprehensive about what they ingest in their body, especially now it's very health conscious. Mm-hmm. So all of our product is uh, basically almost like farm to table. So Happy Farmer is legitimately a Happy Farmer. The dude makes it in his farm in Clarks, Tennessee. Mm. And um, it's, it's like basically like a mom and pop place. And I had the opportunity to be able to work with them. Mm. So with the uh, Sunbeam, these tablets right here, um, still all of it's CBD infused, but also has B12, B6 in it, in it. You take it in the morning, those days you wake up, you're antsy, you know what I mean? You're already aggravated, you don't feel like going to work. Um, you take something like this, it'll smooth you out, calm you down because of the CBD, but you'll still get that little bump of like energy from the B12, mm. B6, which are all natural. So it ain't sugars, it ain't make, make you jittery and things like that. So the counterpart of the um, sunbeam is the moonbeam. Okay. So it's for night. So as you're just being more calm, more relaxed, and you want to go to sleep, this is something that you can take. It has melatonin in it as well. So it help you get to sleep a little better, a little easier. Okay. Um, you got the wild oats and you got the wild horse. Wild oats is uh, 10 milligrams of uh, CBD in it, right? So it give you a little nice, little easy buzz for the weekends when you just want to relax and chill. And uh, the wild, uh, the high horse the high horse has 30 milligrams of CBD in it. It right? is what it sounds like. It is what it sounds like. Okay. So you're going to have a good time. You're going to okay. have a real good time. Can Question, can can professional athletes use this? So In certain sports. Okay. So in Not track, sports. though. Just um, curious. I don't know. So track is different, right? So CBD and hemp is such a ambiguous situation mm-hmm. right now. Um, let's just say THC, right? Mm-hmm. THC can be used out of competition. So okay. if you're getting tested at home and they come at your door, knock on your door and test you at home, you can have a joint in your mouth and you can be pissing the cup at the same time. It doesn't matter. But when you're in competition... T-C- TAC is the actual marijuana? I don't know. Hope. Well, the, the, yeah, the compound of TAC and CBD makes, you know, marijuana. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, but with CBD, it doesn't give you that same effect as TAC. 
So okay. this is something that could be t- taken, but only under discretion. I, I, I want everyone to go, go to the USADA page, go to the WADA page, go whatever page you need to do to make sure you do your own research on it. But I guarantee you it's something that's going to help you recover much better. Yo, can I ask you something? Um, just curious, uh, just even think about back to the Shikari thing. Like we, you're not supposed to use marijuana, but is that an enhancer? Or just curious, what you think? Because I think we see. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but we see um, Ricky Williams is he has a, a big push for marijuana right now because of the the benefits that it has for your body and just yeah. it helps you out, right? I don't want to. He has some called Hyman. Shout out to uh, Ricky Williams if you get a chance to check him out. Yeah, but he's been pushing that for a minute. Yeah, and I think um, I think even now the NFL are starting to or NBA. I'm, hey, I didn't study this part. I'm just having a conversation. Bear with me, man. Judge it, uh, charge to my brain, not my heart. And I think, like, one of the NBA or the NFL, we see them um, letting loose with the uh, marijuana a little bit now. That's NBA. NBA. NFL, too. But NBA, for sure. Like, Is that uh, enhancement? Like, th- is that fair that that even happened? Just cur- like, outside of the rules, just curious how you feel as a person, like, when you s- saw that happen. No, I don't them. think so. Okay. I don't think so. I mean, because, I mean, we all know what it's like to see somebody high or if you've been high, mm-hmm. right? So their reaction is slower. Mm-hmm. They're more calm and loose. Um, they're having a good time. They're just chilling, right? They're not focused. You're not, you know, at attention, right? Mm-hmm. How do, That doesn't help you when you're in sports. You need to be the opposite when you're in sports. On contrary, I seen somebody, I forgot his name. Again, guys, I wasn't even, just thought about it. The guy from Speak, I forgot his name. He had, he had a great point. Well, I don't know if it was him or somebody else, but they were saying that if you do have anxiety, right? True. It could be in, because that's something that comes with the sport. We talk about walking to the pit, having that that that, that feeling in your gut. I mean, it could help you be calm, and that could be a... Yeah, but... All right, cool. You could say that. Argue that with me. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to argue that with you. You take in CBD marijuana, right? Mm-hmm. And it takes away your anxiety. And you go out there, and you play your game, Right? You ball out, you have a good game. You did that naturally. That's mm-hmm. you. You didn't come stronger. You didn't come faster. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't go to a point where, uh, where people were fatigued. You, you still was out there getting it, right? So I don't see where the enhancement is. If anything, you're just even the playing field because you were already at a deficit. Mm. You, you have performance anxiety. And that's... And that's that's debilitating to a lot of athletes out there. A lot, But bro. that's still natural, though, right? Like, you shouldn't be able to do anything to fix that. Like, you should be able to... You got to... I don't want to sound um, in, uh, uh, sensitive, but, like, that's still something that you should be able to work through, just like I had to work through it, right? Yeah, but, I mean, some people aren't built like we built. But does that... I feel like that's an excuse. I mean, some people have to go... Go get built like I'm built. Some people have to go see therapists. Some people have to, you know... Go check out motivational books. So do what you got to do. When you came back, you had to do what you had to do to beat you sane. Okay, so what's the difference between if I go see a therapist and the therapist tells me, you're good enough to do this, and then I start believing what she says, and I go out there and do it. To the effect... That's not taking anything. I'm taking her advice. (laughs) (laughs) I'm taking her advice, bro. I'm taking her advice. (laughs) I uh, I do want to ask you, uh, just since we're here again, I know this is, it gets repetitive at times. She probably all the time. I got to ask you this, though. What happened with your situation exactly? So when I was 18 years old, from when I was second grade, I took Adderall. Well, yeah, that was at that f- point, I was taking medication for ADD, mm-hmm. right? And then that was at a chemical compound in the Adderall that was an amphetamine. Didn't yeah. that, I didn't know that, right? At that age... You 18, 19 years old, you don't know what's in that, right? Mm-hmm. You're just doing what you got to do to be able to pass classes and just feel normal, right? So that was the situation. Mind you, Adderall's not even on the ban list. So mm-hmm. even when you look it up and I had a bottle in my hand, I could never see, oh, Adderall's not on the ban list, right? right? So I dealt with that situation. So I was in college. So I really didn't, I really wasn't punished because it was more of a professional punishment that was handed down to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was still able to compete. And then once I came back, uh, it was a two-year suspension. And then one they year passed. The, oh, they, yeah. they, one year passed. And after that one year passed, I won NCAA championships again, everything like that. They sent me a letter saying, 
we're lifting your ban. In the history of track and field, the history of <laughs> drug testing, that has never, never been happening. Yeah, never happened. I don't, I've never heard anybody say, hey, we're just going to lift your ban. You good. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. So then fast forward to about 2006, I was in a situation where I was working with this massage therapist. And I broke it off with him where I didn't want none of his business because I feel like he was trying to extort me, mm. right? He wanted more money, you know what I mean? Because he saw the success that was coming from 04, 2003, 2004, 2005, mm -hmm. and he was still getting paid what he was supposed to get paid because that was our deal, right? right? So he felt like, well, you know, this person's getting paid, that person's over there getting paid, you know, they getting little bonuses, everybody's happy except for me. So I fired him, you know? It was a collective. We got together with my agent and my coach and was like, you know, you know, we got to let this person go because it's becoming toxic to our, our circle. Mm -hmm. So then crunch time happened. Couldn't find anybody who was up to his qualifications of what he could do as a therapist. Stretching, massage, understanding biomechanics, things like that, right? Usually those kind of people are fractured, right? So you have someone who understands biomechanics, you have understand somebody who's a massage therapist. You bring them together. Yeah, this okay. person was all of that in okay. one. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I bit the bullet and I was like, we had a conversation. I was like, man, you know, love to still work with you. You know, so we started the season off in 2006. He was still working with me. Everything was copacetic. Everything was love. We had a conversation probably mid, almost mid-season and it got kind of a little heated. Um, we was at a race in um, Kansas City. It was a relay. Nothing major, nothing big at all. Just they invited us to come out there because it was the first annual relay they were trying to put on to make some excitement, hype from it, right? And after that race, things got funny. Like, I come across the line. He just was so adamant about make sure I get on the table so he can massage me. Never was acting like that before. Mm. You get on the table, he's massaging me. When you must get a massage, usually how you laying? On your stomach. All right, cool. Right, so when you lay on your stomach, you can't see what's going on behind you, mm -hmm. right? So it was told to me later that, yeah, he was massaging with gloves on, mm. which is unheard of, right? You know, use a massage At therapy. that time especially. At that time especially, right? Yeah, yeah. So then I remember getting off the table and then going doing my press conference. And I remember sitting in press conference, I'm like, my legs feel real tingly. Mm. You know, but the adrenaline was still pumping in me. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it was like, some biofreeze or like I'm just hype, you know what yeah. I mean? So come back after that, didn't get drug tested there. And then, well, I did get drug tested there. And then that drug test went in and that was the one that tested positive mm. for higher levels of testosterone. And so I'm just curious, because I've seen like maybe more than 10 years ago, you had uh, an interview on like a news station where you apologized to the United States. And you just apologize for letting them down. But I'm trying to put myself in that situation and, like, I don't, one, what even, besides the love for the sport, if that, if, 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 if that situation did you so dirty, right, and you knew if they was wrong, why even come back? Why even put yourself back? Why even train so hard and be like, man, I'm coming back to the sport? Because I love the sport. I love it, Doug. Mm. I, I mean, as simple as that. I didn't have... And on top of that, I, I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, doper, that ain't me. I'm legit. I've been legit since I was, I was a little kid. I was winning national titles when I was a little kid. And six-time NCAA champion. So my pedigree stands for itself. So it isn't like I just came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's an art to it. Like, I built myself up to be the, great, the greatness that I am today. Mm. You know, I, I worked hard and I put that work in. You know what I mean? And there's no athlete that trained with me who gonna, who would give me the side eye and be like, oh, no, dog. I'd be out there. I'd be grinding. That's me, you know? Mm. So me coming back in the sport was, it was a few things. I ain't going to lie, man. It was the fact that I wanted to, I wanted to, to clear my name, mm. right? So it can be able to open up the door to my kids have a, have a, a fair legacy to build. A clean, yeah, yeah. A clean legacy mm -hmm. to build their mm -hmm. name off of, I right? See that. I understand that. Yeah, so that was something that really mattered to me. Never said that to my son, mm. you know what I mean? But that's something that I know was going to be with me forever, and I didn't want it to be with them. So that's why I worked hard for it as well. Did you ever try to at least sue the guy? Yeah. I mean, 
it's hard to sue when you don't have certain grounds to stand like on. Like clear cut proof. Exactly. Right. I'm just thinking but like this is what I did though. I sued I sued USADA. So I'm in this situation. I could talk about it now. I had a gag order on this on me. Real talk. So for since 2008 to the year 2021, I could not, as long as I was in track and field, I was competing, I couldn't talk about the fact that I sued USADA in the court of law and I won mm. money as well. So they were willing to pay, but their stipulation was, we're going to pay you, but you, you can't, can't talk about it. Oh, oh, wow, okay. Because that would open up Pandora's box and the, the other athletes would come back and be like, well, my situation was kind of fishy too. So maybe I want to open up this, this, uh, this box and revisit my case as well. Because through discovery in my, in my case, they were breaking a lot of their own rules. I'm cool, you got rules and your rules are getting broken and you're trying to uphold the law of your rules. But when you're breaking your own rules just to be able to be spiteful, to be able to catch people so it can make you look good, then I have an issue with that. And that's what happened. Through discovery in my court case, we found out that um, the packages that the, all the samples go in, right? Drug testing samples, urine cups. It goes into one big bag, right? One, yeah, one big, yeah. That don't even make sense. It don't even sound high tech at all, right? No, it don't Not sense. at all. It don't. It goes into one big bag and that bag is sealed. Once it's put into the transporter, meaning the truck or whatever it's going to go, it's transported to the location where the lab is. Mm -hmm. Now, in between, there's a, there's a person that rides with it, as in like a Brinks truck, right? right yeah, a yeah. person that's, that's handling it and rides with it, right? So he has a login. So he has to log in and say, okay, bag was open. So once the bag is tampered open, their rules state they're supposed, to, they're supposed to get rid of all samples. That makes sense, though. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, science, any cross-contamination, one, first of all, but two, if you open it, that's with anything in science and medicine, whatever. That's what I would assume. Facts. I, I, who, 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 I don't know. I'm just saying. Facts. So with that being said, that, that the whole situation should have never happened. Mm. Never happened. That, all of them samples, my sample, and everybody else's sample in this situation should have been thrown out. Mm. Should have been thrown out, right? So another situation, and that it's the lack of common sense I feel for my case that made me, and I saw how deep it went, and that's why I just like, I can show them better than I can tell them. And okay. So I'll give you an example. When you're in a bad situation, right, like I was in, they appoint lawyers to you because they say that, well, these lawyers specialize in our, our kind of law. So you could pick from this pool of lawyers, right? Cool. So we go through, we're picking lawyers. All right, cool, we're going to get this lawyer. All right, cool, we're looking, doing the research, me and my parents, right? And then we realize that these lawyers... I feel on the other side... I mean, are in bro, bed. Again, I'm just, they are in is... bed with USADA. Yeah. USADA takes them on vacations at the end of the year. It's like a, a I deal with a lot of rappers. It's like a, a, a newly rapper signing a deal and using the record label's lawyer. They we know not to do that. Facts. Well, okay, I'm listening. So, I'm young. I don't know that. My parents know nothing about track and field. Mm -hmm. Know nothing about the court of law either. We experienced all this for our first time on our own. Right? High stress. So we, get, we have a first lawyer, ran through probably $200,000 using that person, right? Now, mind you, they're asking us silly questions like, well, we got a letter back from um, USADA and the IAAF, and they said, if you don't contest the science, then we won't try to give you a lifetime ban. Because that's what I was up against. Mm. Two, two, uh, two positives equals a lifetime ban in our sport. Right? So you get one, you get one positive, that's two years. And the second one, lifetime ban. That's how it is. Mm. So they sent a letter, not provoked, saying if you don't contest our science, we will not go for a lifetime ban. But he's trying to shut you up. Right? Still, once again, young, 18, 19, 20, whatever, naive. Um, we're like, all right, cool. We just Playing along, we we abide by the rules. Come on, what? Let's. We never even it. It was never in our intentions to cheat in the first place. We feel like this whole situation was going to be fixed, right? Never did. It was the fact that we saw the dirty moves that they were trying to make. If I contested the science, or you asking me not to contest your science, there must be an issue then. Yeah. It, first of all, me contesting the science is an opportunity for me to prove my innocence. One and two, it's kind of like in a court of law today when we we. we I'm just being real. 
a lot of African Americans, we go to jail and they give us a court, I mean, a, um, a plea deal because, and they try to scare you because it's like, if you, if you do this, you can get the maximum 10, 20 years. Nobody want that. So it's like, man, I'll take a plea deal, even if I didn't do anything, because I, I don't want to lose. So that brings me to my next part of the, of the conversation. So that's exactly what I felt like. Because once again, through discovery, we found, because they gave us information to show us other cases that were similar to my case, right? So you had one guy who, got, who tested for cocaine. Mm. Cocaine. And he gave him a warning. He, he got no ban. White athlete. Then we have another guy who tested positive for Adderall. Mm. But he had no prescription for it. You see what I'm saying? White guy. So all these situations mm. where are similar or worse than mine, they were giving them warnings and they were letting them go. But in my situation, I felt like because of who I was and who I was around, the coach at that time, and even the color of my skin, I felt like I was receiving a, a way harsher punishment to the point where you give somebody four years away from their job or what they do in their craft, that's the death sentence, basically, right? Mm. And for four years, I had no income, no nothing. For four years. I was lucky enough that I was making a really good amount of money to where I can live off of that money for those four years to sustain myself, right? Mm. But the fact is, I don't think they ever thought I was ever going to come back after four years. Mm. And I came back. And they didn't know what to do with me. So then they repunished me. So now after I served four years, I come back in the sport and they quickly made up a rule where, oh, now you blackball from all diamond leagues. So that means I couldn't run any major races and make any real money. Yeah. So now you tell me I got to run these holding wall meets to make some, some coins off that was less than what my air, airfare was to even get there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I literally was, when I came back, I really was in the mud, uh, like grinding. Yo, I want to first just say, you know, I don't know how I want to word this, but I do truly feel bad because, just being honest, let me be transparent, even me doing my research and stuff, it really ain't make sense to me because, like, if that happens to me, I'm not, like, I'm not going down just, like, I'm not going down like that. In my mind, just follow me, right? And, like, I'm coming back, I'm speaking on it every single time because y'all did me wrong. Mm -hmm. But now I think about it, I mean, you did come back at 30 or something, like, or you was older, I came right. back around, yeah, I was about maybe 20, 29. And that's when back. things start to, that's when you really start to come into yourself. I'm thinking as a young, like, a, if I came back at 25, 26, I'm pissed. Like, mm -hmm. I'm always saying something. But I guess the mindset had to be, like, just locked in. Like, we were talking about yesterday how... But I did. I, I felt just like you was feeling. You mm -hmm. understand? But as a black man in a sport that's ran by white individuals... If I came back as an angry black man, what, what was I going do? to be? Yeah. An angry black man. But you only learn, but I'm you only understand that at 29, 30. Mm -hmm. A little bit, even, but 31, 32. That's when you really understand that. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I will say again, um, again, we just getting acquainted with. I'm a, I'm always like as transparent and real on camera. I want to say, because I don't know I wasn't there. If that's really the case, man, I'm really sorry for that. And I know I ain't had nothing to do with it. But again, not saying, I'm not, I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to accuse you of nothing. Oh, but no, I'm no. saying, because I wasn't there. Yeah. But if that was the case, I'm, I, I, that, like, that's, bro, that's, bro, I, to this day, that would hurt. Yeah. You got to you gotta realize that I had to live with that for the rest of my life. Like, imagine, how many years ago was 2006? Like, tw yeah, almost 20 years ago, yeah, bro. That, I still got to live with that. And, at this point, like, you can't even, again, it's like, I'm giving chills because, like. It hurts I'll, when people ask me, oh, where were you? Uh, and when they reference certain dates, oh, where were you in 2008? In my mind, ban. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or when people bring it up, period. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. You that's, know what I mean? that's literally a part of your story. When, so, if that's, again, I'm just being real. If that's the case, it shouldn't even be a part of your story. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shouldn't even be, like, you can't. That's a part of the, the legacy, and that shouldn't be it. The four years cannot hold the candle to what the emotional damage it did to me, bro. Mm. I ain't going to lie. The fact is that I was smart enough to realize that whatever emotions that were off till, I had to turn into aggression to be able to come back and use it and weaponize it. That really was, was saved me mm. because Justin could not get back out there. 
I'm not built like that. I would have folded. I ain't going to lie. Mm-hmm. But Justin Gatlin, Jay Gat, he was built like that. I had to build a different persona. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because I would walk in rooms and people look at me like I'm a ghost. They'd be like, So I had no friends when I came back, bro. Yeah, I mean, even you know sometimes I mean? people like booed you. Like you got yeah. booed at Beijing. I got booed in London. I got booed in London. Yo, being shit almost what is it, like ten plus years now past it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about it? Like, cause you like again, you can't do an interview without people bring it up because it's a part of the story. Yeah. Like, do you still think about it to this day sometimes? Like a what if, or just think about a period? Not nah, like just think, not what if, but like just oh, the messed yeah. up part. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was for a long time. It, I thought about it daily, dog. Mm. Day daily, because it was a part of my life. It was times where, as we spoke in, early in this conversation, it was times where you talking about me going out and being acknowledged. It was times where I did not want to be acknowledged. Mm. I was embarrassed to be in public, bro. It, I was afraid that somebody was going to come up to me and talk to me and and mention that because I wasn't I wasn't healed yet. You know what I'm saying? It was hard for me to even discuss and talk about this like we're talking about it now mm. without me crying about it because I felt like years in my career were taken from me mm. and I could never get them back. A lot of times with the hurt comes anger, right? And I'm curious, and this is just for me, I do a lot of interviews and sometimes I get people who are seasoned and are able to talk about the past and, the, and reflect on it and the learning things, but then other people... More, more sort of younger artists or younger people, they don't want to talk. They say, I don't want to talk about this. How important or not important is it for you to be able to talk about it and just talk about it freely? Uh, and really important. It's really important, dog. I'm, I think that's a good thing about this generation now and where we're at in society where a lot of people have their own social media. They, own, they can use their own voice. Mm. I didn't have the opportunity to use my own voice, you know? Um, so I felt like I was always subjected to whatever the media was going to say about me, and that's who I was. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But now, it's very important for you to get your point across. Why not? There's always two sides to a story. My mom, my mom would always tell me, it's two sides to a story, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Mm. So if you don't tell what your side is, the world's always going to take the side that's out there, mm. and they're going to think that's who you are. You're a bad guy. you a doper. you you this. you ignorant. you whatever. But if you don't tell who your side of the story what do you have to stand on? And I think that too, but I, was, I, I don't want to. But I'm, I'm getting a little mature, so I understand. I'm starting to understand the other side of sometimes you not there yet to want to even speak about it. Like, bro, I don't want to talk about this. Like, let's let's skip this question. Because at first I'm like, bro, this is what makes you human. Yeah. This is how we gonna relate to you. But I guess if you're not ready for it to talk about it, it's like. I can I I kind of get that. Do you feel like it's a man thing though? Do you feel like us oh, as men no. we we kind of sitting on things to figure out how we can digest the emotions of it? Not from my perspective because it's men and women. Like, so why do you feel like you just don't want to talk about it? Because you just don't want to talk. Oh about no, it? me. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh oh oh. Like so usually again when I'm talking about work. In usually general, the PR. I mean, okay, usually yeah. the PR. Like yeah. we don't want to bring any extra attention to this situation. Yeah, yeah. I personally hate it, but now that I'm understanding, like, one, you might not be ready to talk about it, right? You mm-hmm. might not even have the words to be able to, to, to articulate it because, again, no matter how good our conversation is, once this interview is out, whoever who, who wants to do something can do something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if I didn't, even if it wasn't a good conversation, even, even if it was a good conversation, they can make it whatever they want to make it. Yeah. So I can understand that part of, like, let's not even give them the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? At, and at one point in time, that's why I was. Mm. I didn't want to talk about it no more. It will be times where I do interviews and be like, nah, we don't want to talk about that. Mm. It will be a very tender and a very delicate situation for me to talk about, right? Mm. But then as my second half of my career unfolded and it showed just as much or more success as the first part of my career, I understood the importance of me talking about my times where it was dark for me because it showed how I climbed out of that darkness exactly. and became the success that I knew I was going to be. And that's what so I, I had to talk about. It. I think that's important. I yeah. wish everybody, but again, I'm, I, I can only understand from a distance. You feel me? That's my mm-hmm. perspective, but whatever. Yo, um, I'm so glad you're able to get on the platform and talk about that. If it was anything that could be a learning lesson for young athletes out there, right? Or, or even somebody that might, shit, I should carry, right? Like anybody that, that was going through that, what, what what advice do you give them? If not even advice, words, or care, like what do you say to them to make them feel better, to make them f- understand that 
it's not the end of the world because I know at that time you felt like it was the end of the world. Same for Shakari, whoever it yeah, might be going through. Hundred um, percent. My advice would be: you have to realize that you are stronger than the situation you put in. Mm. You're stronger than the situation you put in. You're gonna be able to survive it. You just gotta be make sure that you up your IQ game, you become smarter, and you realize how you can be able to counter and be able to get back on the on the track of success. Mm. That's it. You can't. It's going to be emotional, but you can't let emotions control your situation. You gotta right. start thinking. You got right. to because that's the only way you're gonna get out of situations. You think yourself out of bad issues. You don't love or emotionless emotion yourself out of bad issues. Mm. So you have to think yourself out of those situations. And I think that you have a lot of athletes now because when you look at our sport, right, and you don't look at athletes who are just testing positive anymore. Now they're getting they're getting banned off of like whereabout infractions. Mm. And that's just like basically you not being in the place you should be at the time you said you was going to be. That's it. So just off of that, those third parties to the government, USADAs, the WADAs and stuff like that, the AIUs, they're going to put out there where it's going to be really subjective to the audience to say, well, this person wasn't where we, he said he's going to be, so he missed the test, so now we're going to ban him. So now it's going to make him think like, oh, you, you duck in and dodge and test. But then you realize life is intertwining with these athletes' careers. Mm. You're talking about a 20-year-old, 21-year-old athlete, oh and they're God. supposed to get on a laptop or a computer and sit down there and, and go through all this and figure out how to be able to click and say, my window of testing is going to be at this time, and please... You know, and this is an annual thing you have to do. You got to constantly do it. And you out in the clubs as a youngster, you out in the clubs having fun. You might pick up a little, you know, a little sum. You might say, you know what, I'm not going to go home tonight. You ain't thinking about changing your whereabouts. Let me, let me, let me. You know help. what I'm saying? Let me <laughs> help doing out. that? You went to Tennessee, so you might not have went through this. It's like for my HBCU students out there. Bro, I be forgetting to do my FAFSA when I was in college, bro. Exactly. <laughs> they had to remind me to do my FAFSA. Am I lying? Like, and we we got kicked out of class for that. Like, and that was once a year. So I get, I'm showing you that I understand. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so, bro, nobody, and granted, you could say that you're professional, heavy to head, that wear the crown, to whom much is given, much is, I get all that. But when you 18 and 19 and 20, even 23, Bro, you're not... You ain't thinking, you ain't about, thinking, that. thinking about that. You ain't like, thinking about that. Yeah, that's serious. And even with, like, the, 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 the social media, I think that is the downfall because... And that's one thing that I thank God for, bro, just being honest. And um, I'm truly grateful about is... And I know you can um, appreciate this. Is not having those mistakes up and open now. Like, nowadays, a 23-year-old... Let's think about it. Some people could say, well, I don't care. Um, what's the basketball player name? John Morant, mm -hmm. right? He's been a 23-year-old. It just is what it is. It might be stupid to some or whatever the case may be, but he's not able to make mistakes like your everyday person. All right, I'm glad you brought that up. Did he break a rule or a law, or was it just morally not in a good light? It wasn't in a good light. Okay, cool. But even, but I'm not even talking with a moral conspect. Just I'm just talking about a mistake, bro. Like it was it's mistakes that. Like I said, I thank God, like, bro, it's things that I did at 18, 19, 23, 25 that because I wasn't a superstar or I wasn't popular, nobody gave a fuck. Like, yeah, my my social group probably judged me, but I was able to get through it. Nowadays, a 23-year-old can't really be a 23-year-old because, or a superstar, right? Because the moment they do anything that's outside of the normal or that's a mistake, people are so quick to judge you. You're right. And it's like, I do feel a little bad because, like, bro, like, it's things that I did way worse than that. You're right, 100%. And I, I feel like, especially since we brought up his we brought up Ja, you got to look at it from his perspective. He owns a gun, registered, law-abiding, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't break any rules. He didn't break any laws. It was something that was morally not in the right light, right? Right. Okay, cool. So if it's morally not in the right light, how am I supposed to know and where am I supposed to read this at that, okay, you guys don't allow this because it's just something that they saw him do, and in real time, they made a, a decision to say, oh, we're going to ban you or mm -hmm. we're going to find you. I feel like that's, that's wrong. And Those you, That responsibility should be on a federation to cover all bases, to make whatever rules you decide to make 
and you put it out there in front of the athletes, and then you say, these are our rules, laws, and moral things that we stand for, and we anything else is, is wrong. You can't say this man can't have his gun and do whatever the hell he want to do with his gun, if, especially if it's all legal. On, all legal. And, I, and I don't even want to seem like I'm making excuses for nobody, right? But I'm just, I'm just, bro, I was young. I'm from the hood, bro. I done did some retarded stuff, bro. And I'm just really just empathizing. Yeah, he made a mistake several times, right? Cool. But if you're judging somebody, right, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself how many times you made the same mistake. Really, bro. Like, that's why I'm not trying to make excuses. I just want people, I feel like the internet dehumanize, I don't know if that's a real word, but whatever. It dehumanize people sometimes because it's like, you're so quick to say what somebody is doing is wrong. Bro, how many times you 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 with that 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 that, that dude that's putting his hands on you still with him, whatever can it be? I hope ladies you're not, but how many times you didn't you 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 stayed in a situation where you you shouldn't have yeah. you made decisions that you shouldn't have over and over again. Right? right? But it's like we be like so quick to judge somebody else, pass judgment on somebody else for what we, because we ain't do it, but we did other things. Yeah, it's like, bro, y'all gotta relax on this internet. I'm sorry, I ain't mean to. Get no, no, it. you're good. It's, you're like, good. It's, it's it's real. Yeah, bro, it's real. Especially as an athlete, you you put on a pedestal. So when you put on the pedestal, you're judged at a different. You you are judged different. Period. Right. You know well, you're still a human being, just like everybody else. You are. Else. We're still a human being, God. Still a human being. Yo, um, you got some um business coming up. Uh, wait, before we get to the business. I'm curious because you said you was you you wasn't able to do Diamond League sometimes. You had to do other things. Then it wasn't getting as much money, bro. How does track runners get paid, bro? Outside of sponsorships, I'm just curious. So sponsorships would fall under shoe companies. Shoe companies rule our sport, basically, right? Okay. So so you you running in Nike, you most likely are sponsored by Nike. I'm running Adidas, I'm most likely gonna be sponsored by Adidas. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So those shoe companies are gonna pay you. Usually they're gonna pay your base salary. They're gonna pay your bonuses if you win championships, right? Mm. Those are where you're gonna get the lion's share of your money, right? So now you have, you got to think of yourself as basically a contractor. So now these meat promoters who are putting on meats, it can be in Rome, it can be in Paris, it can be anywhere in the world, right? Um, if you're good enough, they're going to invite you. Mm. If you're not there just yet, usually what happens, your agent will reach out to the meat promoter and say, "Hey, we want to get you know a lane. Is it possible?" And you can and then, go, but you probably won't get paid to go. Uh, it depends. In, in negotiation, every negotiation is different. Okay. That's, that's the weird thing about our sport. It's not no cut and dry, like, you show up, everybody getting the same amount of money. It's like, okay, my agent negotiated this for me, and I'm, a, I'm at a higher percentage. I can get appearance fee for just showing up. An appearance fee can be 10 times more than what the prize money is. Mm. So I'm just there showing up because that athlete who's a, a premium athlete they're putting butts in seats. So then that meat promoter is a little, has a little more incentive to give you more money because he knows you packing out the stadium. Coming back, though, did that help with the bag? I, well, of course, you can't go to Diamond League, but I would assume it's controversy around your name. Like, shit. So I remember my agent, and you, I was very frustrated, dog, like after a while because I couldn't get into meats, big meats, and make any kind of money. I was like, you know what? Why? What are we doing here, right? And he's like, look, the great equalizer is if you run fast. I was like, well, I can't get in the meets, the big meets to run fast. He's like, if you're good enough, you run big, you run big times and small meets. And that's what we did. We started, mm. I literally, dog, I started from the bottom. Like all them dudes that I raced for years, I had to work my way up to get to, back to, get race, back them. to race them again, dog. That gotta be. It's, oh, it's like, it's like, you remember back in the day when you played video games, dog? And then somebody bumped the cons uh, console or some shit like and that. You, oh, you gotta and you, get all, and you, you gotta, gotta beat all the levels again. Yeah, beat all the levels again, dog. So oh I had to go all the way back through, dog, <laughs> all the way back, all the way to the top. And then I finally, one, one me promoter who was in Diamond Leagues, he said, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm take a chance on you because I was running fast times. He knew that that was going to get attention. Mm. So he put me in the race. And then after that, went in the race, other, other Diamond Leagues started kind of relaxing a little more. Mm. Not every Diamond League, for even up to the day I retired, there was some Diamond Leagues who didn't want me and didn't, uh, didn't take my invitation if I wanted to be there. And they were like, you can come, but we're not going to pay you mm. appearance to be here. Yo, so w why is it, I'm going to feel like, so I understand the, the pay gap from NBA to WNBA. Not a lot of people watch WNBA. Uh, from a lot of male and female. But even I was reading a while ago that it's a, it's a pay gap for male sprinters and female sprinters. No, not really, I mean, really, difference, no? No, not anymore. All right, because I didn't under, I was going to say, I didn't understand that. Not anymore. Okay. Not anymore. I seen Sydney just sign, like, what, a one, two mil? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. 
the thing in our sport is if you have the if factor. The if factor is going, you're going to get paid because of that. Okay. You could be male or female. As long as you have it, you winning, you successful, you have some kind of persona about you, you're going to get paid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of getting paid, you um, you about to start training. Wait, can I talk about this? Yeah, yeah, you can talk about it. You about to start training so you can uh, break <laughs> the record in the, uh, the fastest 40. But on yeah. top of that, you trying to start training other athletes to have a faster 40, which is going to get them a bag too. Facts. Especially in NFL players. Exactly. So my my project, uh, you can call it Project 40 or 40 for 40. Mm. So that's been working on. So I'm going to I'm gonna basically uh, simulate me training like a combine athlete who's mm-hmm. getting ready to do the draft for the NFL. I'm going to train just like them, six to eight weeks. And then within that time period, I'm going to run a 40. Now, once I get to that point, I have enough confidence in myself that I can break the 40-yard NFL record. What's the record? 4-2-1. Nobody ran a 4-1? Nope. Who ran a 4-2-1? Uh, the dude from the Titans or no? I think it was uh, I think it was Chris Johnson, wasn't it? Yeah, Chris Johnson, right? Yeah, he played Johnson, for the Titans, yeah. right? Yeah. He ran a 4-2-1? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, oh, Lord, so I'll be remembering a little bit. <laughs> okay. And you think you could beat Chris Johnson record? Yeah, I know I could beat Chris Johnson record, man. Well, no, no, no disrespect. No, no, no slight. That's, that's my boy, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really talk to him, though. But the fact is, at the end of the day, you know, um, what I want to show, because I'm getting to that point now where I'm coaching, and the knowledge that I do have, I want to pass it on, mm-hmm. right? So I want to pass that knowledge of speed, agility, at a high elite level, on to the next generation. And I feel like what's going to set me apart is, not only can I coach it, but I can still do it. Mm. I can show you how to do it. I can get down the grind with you. At 40 plus? At 40 plus. Yo, you, at, if you beat the record at 40 plus, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care. I'll be, I'll be theoretically competing against the, that class of guys who are like 18, pretty much half 19, my age. Yeah, 19 to 21. Yeah, yeah duh. The people that's running it. Yeah. Yeah. Sheesh. You so say you really think you got this? I think I can do it. I'm wishing you the best. I ain't gonna lie. You sound like, you know what you sound like? What I sound like? Terrell Owens, because he think he could do everything. He <laughs> tell you he the fastest. He's like, bro, he's still a competitor, bro. I ain't going to say I could do everything now. But the fact is, I really feel like this is something that's been talked about, and this is a conversation that a lot of people have. Mm-hmm. Who's faster, football players or track athletes, right? And then you'll say, oh, you know, track athletes are faster. All right, cool. But then you'll have a side that says, well, they're running on rubber. And then they're running with spikes. And they're using starting blocks. You know what I mean? And then other people say, well, Football players are faster because of such and such. Mm. I want to be able to dead that whole conversation. I'm a track athlete at a high level who's done it for a long time. I'm going to go into what your house is. I'm going to put on cleats. I'm going to do it on turf. I'm going to make sure that I go through the whole step process that y'all have gone through to show you that, you know, track speed is, is superior. So if- There's no beef. There's no crips and bloods here. The fact is you want to be fast. And like you said, the 40-yard dash is a, is a, is a multi-million dollar business. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get you higher up in your draft. That's a fact. And a lot of these athletes know that. The agents know that. And these teams know that. The thing is, well, why don't you go straight to the source then? Mm. Why are you finding somebody who's reading and studying books? Why don't you find somebody who's done it, who's been in the fight for over 20 years? Yo, so you don't ever think about, like, you going to fuck the game up? Because if you're teaching mad people how to run a 40 fast, now you about to just... Well, you gonna fuck the whole game up? Well, call me Amazon, dog. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely that's the game. Oh, Amazon look. get. <laughs> so if they if they change it, you know at least you know you got a fingerprint on that. If they change yeah. some rules and they like I did that, that was yeah. good for me. Yeah. Nah, this is good, bro. Anything um anything we we, we miss? I feel like we talked about all. Nah, I think we uh, we covered it all, dog. Bro, this is fire, bro. For, I, I really appreciate you, bro. Like I if they don't, I I, I acknowledge you as a, the legend you are. I appreciate this just as if it was motherfucking. I don't know, uh, uh, Jay-Z sitting next to me. Honestly, I, 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 I salute you, bro. I appreciate I thank you, that. I thank you for pulling up. Hopefully, we can have more conversations down the line, whatever, when you in town or whatever. But I, appreciate I kept it real. I told you, hey, we couldn't get it done yesterday. I said, we're going to carve out time. We're going to get it done today. You did. You, know you kept your word, man. Your yeah, word, man. real talk. Uh, Justin Gatlin, Jay Hill, Jay Hill Podcast. It don't get no better than this, man. It's a wrap. We out. <laughs>